Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. We gather to rejoice and praise and worship God, our maker, and Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Lord, and to be filled with the Spirit. We gather together with thanksgiving this Thanksgiving week, and we look to God for help in our very, very challenging days. Let us begin with Come, Ye Thankful People, Come. Oh, 
come now to our time of confession, how powerful and effective it is when we dig deep and we examine our hearts to see ways in which we are turning away from God. We're looking the other way. We're engaged in selfish behavior. We're putting walls up between ourselves and others. And we are shutting our ears and our eyes to the hurt in the world and even to the hurt within ourselves instead of turning to God and asking God for help. Let us confess together the silent things that we are aware of in our lives and, and let us confess as a community of faith. Let's pray. Wonderful and holy God, we confess that we get stuck. We confess that we see things through our perspectives and we do not always get out of the way and look for the perspectives of others. We are quick to condemn positions that are different from ourselves, and we are quick to become hopeless and discouraged, full of fear. Oh Lord, forgive us. Be merciful to us so that we may live as your people, full of joy and thanksgiving, even in hard times. Transform us, we pray into the people that you created us to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Believe the good news, praise be to God, we are forgiven, amen. My message to the children today is a question for you about what's the biggest gift you've ever received? And what's the smallest gift that you've ever received? And can you think about a gift that really meant a lot to you, that really touched you and made you happy? And I would like us to be aware, kids, that sometimes the things that mean the most to us are not things that we naturally would think of as gifts, but everything that makes us happy is a gift. So maybe the biggest gift you've ever gotten was a big, tangible item, like maybe a playground set or a trampoline. I think the biggest gift that I ever got was a bicycle when I first was able to ride a two-wheeler. And the smallest gift I ever got was a little tiny box that you took the top off of. And a friend of mine in college had written down Bible verses on really thin paper. And she had written them, and then she had scrolled them up, rolled them up in a little tiny, uh, you know, circular uh, ball. And she put them all in this little tiny box. There were about a hundred of them. And she said, take them out any day when you're looking for God, or when you're feeling da down, or sad, or alone. I got another gift like that not that long ago from another friend, and she had everyone write on a little piece of paper and put it in a glass uh, bottle so that I could take them out. Now, those were small gifts, but those gifts touched me, kids. Those gifts made me so happy because they said kind things to me. Maybe one of your smallest gifts but happiest gifts is when a teacher gives you a compliment or when your parent thanks you for doing something, or when someone says, I love you. Those you may not think of as gifts. You're thinking of gifts like Christmas gifts, and you open up the box, and you unwrap the bow. But everything that brings us joy is a gift. And we give gifts every time we bring happiness to someone. And we receive gifts every time our heart is happy, whatever's making it happy. So kids, I want you to realize that it's not always the biggest gift or the most expensive gift that's the greatest gift. Often, the best gifts of all are those that don't cost any money, like saying, thank you, and I love you. And we can give those gifts, and we can receive those gifts. So God bless you kids as you find ways this Thanksgiving and this Christmas season to say thank you and I love you, or to give a gift that you know would touch someone and make them happy. And don't forget to receive everything that brings you joy with thanks. 
and do what you can to bring joy to others. Kids, you are a joy just by being you, so God bless you. Our scripture reading today is from the Psalms. I will be reading Psalm 100. Listen for the word of God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is God that made us, and we belong to God. We are God's people. We are the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks to God and bless God's name, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever, and God's faithfulness is to all generations. The word of God for the people of God Thanks be to God. Would you please bow your heads and pray with me? God, I ask that you speak through my words, by your spirit, that you guide the words that I speak, and you guide what each person hears, that we would hear directly from you so that we could be your thankful people we could worship with joy and gladness and praise, and we could have peace that passes understanding. Thank you, Lord. We trust in you, and oh, how very much we need you during these hard times. In Jesus' name, amen. A parishioner recently sent me an email giving me instructions and information for his memorial service. It included scripture passages and songs to be sung and the things that were important to him. Well, Reverend Matthew and I were at the church, and Reverend Matthew was in the office on the church computer, and I was in the other room, and I suddenly heard Reverend Matthew gasp one of those gasps of deep terror and grief and sadness. And I heard his voice. I heard the, the grief and pain in it. And he said, oh, no, no. And he named the parishioner. And I knew that he had seen the email, which I had forwarded to the church with the subject line, so-and-so's memorial service. And I know that he looked down and he saw the scripture verses. And he saw the songs, and he thought that we were planning a memorial service for this parishioner who is young and healthy and has a long, long time to still live and bless the world. Sometimes that's just how 2020 is going. We're feeling so caught by surprise. We get those gut kicks, those stomach punches that just shake us off our foundation, that rock us to our core, that make us look to the future, wondering, really, Lord, what's next? On my way to church today, I had a soda can in the back seat on the floor. I had taken it off the front seat because someone was getting in my car last night, and I put it on the floor behind my seat. And while I'm driving, I, I came up to the stoplight, and I heard it roll, and it hit something. And obviously, these aluminum cans must be made with really thin aluminum because I heard it pop and burst all over my car. And I thought, really, Lord, what else can happen? But then immediately, don't we go to, well, a burst soda pop can in a car is nothing compared to those who have just had a hurricane sweep through their towns in Central America, those who are still reeling from forest fires out west, those who are going to work and putting themselves on the line every day in these health care centers, those who are intubated and on life support, those who have said farewell to a loved one, those who are ticking off every month. They know how many months it's been. It's been seven months. It's been eight months since they said farewell to their loved one. They've just gotten a diagnosis. They're looking and figuring out how to carry on when life is so hard. We are called 
to give thanks, to make a joyful noise, as Psalm 100 says, to worship with gladness and with praise. As my friend who um, called me this week and said, my cancer's back, said to me, well, I'm very pragmatic, she said. It's been 21 years that I've been cancer free. And she said, I have good friends and I have loved ones and I have my wonderful faithful church family. And she said, we caught it early because I go for testing regularly, even during COVID now. And she said, most of all, I have a strong faith in the Lord. So just as the Apostle Paul says in Romans 14, 8, whether we live or whether we die, we belong to the Lord. But the Lord calls us, as the psalmist says in 100, Psalm 100, worship with joy, make a joyful noise, be full of thanksgiving and gladness and praise. And yet sometimes, don't you wonder if you can keep going? This Thanksgiving week, I know many of you are agonizing because your loved ones aren't coming home. Others of you are agonizing because they are insisting on coming home and you don't want to be exposed to the virus. I know many of you are agonizing because you see your loved ones spiraling downward. We are fragile. We are in pain. We are hurting. And yet on this Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the Christian liturgical year, we are called to worship with gladness, make a joyful noise. We are called to be thankful people. And sometimes we wonder, how, oh Lord, how? I want to talk now about why Psalm 100 tells us to worship. I want to talk about what worship is, and I want to speak about how we are going to worship this holiday season. Why does the psalmist say, make a joyful noise, worship with gladness, come into God's courts with thanksgiving and praise? Because the psalmist knew that life is hard. Life was hard then, life has been hard since then, Life was hard during the plague a hundred years ago. Life is hard now during this deadly pestilence, as we sing about in God of our fathers. Life is hard. Life is fragile, and we are fragile people. And worship is what lifts our spirits. As Amy Collette says, worship is a powerful catalyst for happiness. It's the spark that lights a fire of joy in our souls. The psalmist calls us to worship, to pick us up, to give us hope, to give us encouragement. I was with a doctor friend this week, and he told me how he was really brokenhearted because he has been serving a family for generations, of four generations in dentistry. He's loved this family. He's known all branches of the family. And he said, I think I offended somebody and they haven't been back none of them have they're not returning my calls i tried i reached out a couple of times he said i think i've lost all of them he said my inadvertent comment must have been offensive i saw her wince when i said it but my heart is love and I feel like now we're in this divided world, we're in this irritable world, we're in this easily offended world where we get easily offended and we easily offend. We pierce each other's hearts. We're in this fragile and vulnerable place where people are walking away from each other because they're in their own pain and then we take things so sensitively and we're hurt so easily. I saw the pain in my doctor friend's eyes. I heard the grief in his voice and he said, I think I've lost all of them and i don't know what else to do but pray that's one of the things we do this thanksgiving week this christ the king sunday is we take things to the lord so we're told in psalm 100 to worship because life is hard and we need worship so number two what is worship worship is a state of being where we look for god every moment 
or in the moment of worship. That's what worship is. It's looking for God and saying thank you to God. That's why we come on Sunday mornings. That's why we worship on special uh, occasions, because we want to thank God. Worshipful is being thankful. A worshipful heart is a grateful heart. So how appropriate this Thanksgiving that we are worshipful even in the midst of our pain when we're on the receiving end or we recognize that we're on the causing end worship is coming to the party of creation as dr otadi says like i like to tell you god's created this party of creation for us beauty all around and we're invited to it and our response is to say how can i gratefully respond how can i live a grateful life what does a life of gratitude look like. Our great theologian John Calvin says it's the duty of human beings to be thankful, to give thanks to God, our creator, our maker. And so we do. Thanksgiving this week is not going to look like it's looked before. You may have a small table, you may be alone. You may be shedding many tears from morning through noon through night. Or you may be having lots of people, and you may be having masks on and trying to keep your distance. But this Thanksgiving, as every Thanksgiving, we are grateful whether we're near or far, for family, for friends, for God, for food. But there is so much more for which to be grateful, isn't there? So Psalm 100 gives us six points that I want to address in this the lord is god psalm 100 says in verse 3 and i know many of you tell me you have a hard time memorizing that's not your gift but we can all remember psalm 100 that's an easy number to remember and we can remember that psalm 101 says make a joyful noise to the lord all the earth and and so as we make a joyful noise one of the things for which we're grateful is what it tells us in verse 3 the lord is God. As Susan Barkley, a Canadian artist, writes about this passage, well, that takes the pressure off. Well, we don't have to try to control the universe. God has it well in hand. God has given us responsibility for ourselves, our thoughts, our words, our actions. That's enough. Psalm 100 goes on and says, God made us. We didn't make ourselves. God made us, so God gets to define us. There is so much confusion in today's world with so many people about their identity. People are troubled, people are seeking, people are confused, and yet we are made by God. So God gets to define us. So we are able to look to God and search for God's answers. Just ask God, who am I and who have you made me? to be. Our identity is in Christ. Number three, we are God's people, Psalm 100 says. We are the sheep of God's pasture. The Lord is our shepherd. We are the Lord's people. We belong. That's something for which to be grateful. It tells us in verse 5 of Psalm 100, the Lord is good. The Lord is the giver of all gifts as it says also in james 1 17 the verse you probably do know every good and perfect gift is from above that's something for which to be thankful that we have gifts that the lord fills us with all good things and blessings number five god's love endures forever it says in psalm 100 god never stops loving so we are all connected to God through love. That's something for which to be thankful. Whenever we love, we are connected to God. So make a joyful noise to the Lord, for we are God's people. And number six, finally, God is faithful through every generation. Psalm 100 tells us God never fails. Can you hold on to that? truth can you be thankful and grateful god never fails you yes it feels like god's failing us when our kids aren't coming home or our loved ones have died 
or we've gotten a diagnosis, or we're going to work every day, and we're trying to make a difference, but it's so much harder than it ever was, or we're not seeing anyone ever, we're isolated, we're disconnected, we can't go to the gym, and we're not going to worship, and we're working remotely, and everything's virtual, and we're tired of Zoom. Yes, it doesn't always feel like God is faithful, but God never fails us, and we can look for God, and we can look for the blessings, and we can be thankful. We can safely put our trust in God, as my friend that was just diagnosed this week is doing. Or as another friend of one of our parishioners, a best friend, who just got diagnosed and now is in her last days, and she's saying with a strong faith, it's my time. She's comforting those around her. It's my time. She's comforting her daughter. She's comforting her loved ones. It's my time. We are in God's hands, my friend. And so we are called to worship because life is hard. Worship is when we have a grateful state of heart, that we look for God and we thank God every moment. We recognize we're invited to the party of creation, and there is a party all around us. And so we say thank you. So what does worship look like for us this Thanksgiving, this holiday season, when it feels so very hard? Well, it's like I was talking to the kids about big gifts and little gifts. Sometimes there are big blessings that are hitting us in the head. They're so obvious, and it's so easy to be thankful. And maybe this year is one of those years that we're being thankful that we can breathe, that we're not on a tube in the hospital. Maybe this is one of those years that we're being thankful when we look out and there's a blue sky or the beautiful cloud formations on a cloudy sky. Or we look out at night and we see the stars or we see a shooting star in this season of these shooting stars. Or we are grateful that we can taste and smell. Maybe this is a Thanksgiving when we're grateful for the small things, the essential things. We tune our hearts to every little blessing so that we can be grateful people. But it's also a time when the Christmas season's coming up, and there are people who have all different ideas for Sundays and for Christmas Eve. Should we be having in-person worship or not? There are people, as you know, all across the spectrum, but usually one extreme or the other. Of course you should not be having in-person worship. It's not safe, it's irresponsible. And others who are saying, if I don't see a person and feel connected, I won't be alive much longer. They're mentally not healthy. They're saying to me, I'm not well. I'm spiraling. I'm not doing well at all. I need to have a way to connect. I need to have in-person worship. And so as Lester Holt on NBC Nightly News said, we're all in this together. We all want to care for the greater good, but no one position has the answer for everybody, though that's not what we would be led to believe. He, he, even Lester Holt was able to say, it's not all about our lives. Sometimes it's about our emotional states. It's not all about COVID. Sometimes there are life and death issues outside of COVID that people need a connection. So we in this church, we want to be good, responsible citizens and community members, and we have a responsibility to our congregation and to the wider community on many levels, not just COVID. The holidays, as one of our elders so articulately said, are joyous for so many, but very, very difficult for some. And it's important for us to provide a place safely and responsibly for people to connect on the sacred night of Christmas Eve. Virtual worship is a great option, but it's not for everyone. And with further social isolation on the horizon, we want to be a place of light and life and hope in a sacred place where people can come and can see from a distance, with their masks on, with their temperature checked, not opening the door because the greeter's touching the door. They can see in the candlelight of this holy, sacred evening of the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. They can see the light. 
and they can hear O Holy Night and Silent Night. So if we are so clear about how we can do this, not wanting to take risks, but letting each person, not pushing anyone or pressuring anyone to come, but letting each person weigh the risks and the benefits for themselves, knowing that they would be socially distanced and they'd have a mask on and make the right informed decision for themselves. And so they could come to any of our three indoor services that we would have a limited number of people, or they could come to our outdoor service so that they could be in open air, so that we can encourage people to worship, to worship the Lord with joy and thanksgiving and praise. We are all clawing for equilibrium. We are all in pain and fragile. We are all easily offended and causing offense. The psalmist understands our pain. God understands our pain. Jesus is walking with us in our pain, and we are called to make a joyful noise, to worship with gladness and praise and thanksgiving. So let me close with this paraphrase of Psalm 100 by Eugene Peterson. And if anyone is looking for a gift to give to someone this Christmas, the message is a great paraphrase of the Bible that would be a blessing to anyone because it's so readable. So listen to Psalm 100 in the paraphrase as Eugene Peterson writes it in the message. It's called a Thanksgiving Psalm. On your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Seeing yourselves into God's presence. Know this. God is God. God made us. We didn't make God. We're God's people. We're well-tended sheep. So we enter with the password, thank you. We make ourselves at home with God. We talk in praise. We thank God and we worship God. For God is sheer beauty. God is all generous in love. God is loyal always and ever. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Let's turn our pain into resolve, to be thankful, to understand that we're called to worship because it's hard. Worship is a state of mind, of gratitude, looking for God every moment and saying thank you and understanding that Church of the Western Reserve will provide a space, unless we're told by the health officials absolutely not to, that is safe and responsible on the holiest Christmas Eve night to come and worship. What does a life of gratitude look like? It looks like an ever-present state of being thankful a state of mind and a state of heart that we can make a joyful noise to the Lord in every moment. Happy Christ the King Sunday, friends, and happy, happy Thanksgiving. Amen. Let's sing now, Shout to the North. Oh. 
us pray. Holy God, there are so many needs in the world, and sometimes we feel helpless. We feel ineffective. We see the pain in our own hearts, and we have a hard enough time pulling ourselves out of our pain. And we see the pain in others and in the world. And we can't be up close. We can't be hugging. Oh, Lord, we're grateful for the technology that enables us to look at someone upon a screen and smile. We're grateful that we can say thank you and I love you. We're grateful for a holiday that makes us be attentive to gratitude. And whether we're alone and whether this is a time that is the hardest Thanksgiving of our lives, or whether this is a time that we're over the moon with gratitude that we are still alive and walking. We give you thanks and we lift up to you those who are hurting among us, those who are in need and struggling. And we pray for your power to come upon them, for them by your supernatural intervention to feel connected, to feel made whole, to feel hugged by you with your strong arms around them, to feel hope that they will be pain-free, to feel hope for the future and this vaccine, and that we will be able to live and be in person again. Thank you for keeping your hand upon us all and soften our hearts toward one another. Oh, Lord, that we would be less judgmental, we would be more merciful, more quick to forgive and be gracious, and that includes ourselves. We pray these things together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, we come to our time of offering, and, and many of you know this is stewardship season. This is the season when we think about our use of our resources as a church and as individuals. We ask God to make us faithful stewards, responsible users of all the gifts that God gives us, our time, our talents, and our treasures. And we ask God to lead us in how much we are led to support the ministries of this church so that we can carry on and we can do our best as hard as it is to be a community, to create connections, to bring love, to rejoice together and to weep together, as the Bible says, to recognize that we are all in this together. We thank you for your gifts. We thank you for your pledges for 2021 that will enable us to carry on and we ask that God bless you so that you can feel secure in God's love and you can be committed to share a portion of God's blessings to, with those around you. There is nothing like the joy that comes from being faithful to God and serving others. We thank you for your offerings and your tithes. And now go forth. May the blessings of God the Father, the blessings of Jesus Christ, and the blessings of God's holy and divine spirit be upon you this day and forever and ever. Happy Christ the King Sunday. Amen.